Hi guys, so in this particular video, I'm going to talk about how HFTs build ultra low latency systems, how they are able to achieve a tick to trade latency of in the order of nanoseconds, how they basically try to beat other traders, other trading firms or even or their competitors in the market. I mean, you can imagine high frequency trading as an F1 race. I mean, in an F1 race, uh, to basically win an F1 race, you need best car. Similarly, to, you know, be profitable in an in a high frequency trading domain, you need best set of hardwares. Now, to win an F1 race, you also need a very good driver. I mean, in fact, an extraordinary or the best driver. Similarly, to win in high frequency trading, you need the best set of traders or the best set of trading team. And apart from that, you also need, you know, people who are able to build that car, maintain that car. I mean, during pit stops, you might have seen how fast they try to replace the tires and all those things. So similarly, you need in a high frequency trading domain, you also need best set of core engineers or developers. I mean, it's and you are racing against. I mean, in F1 race, you are basically racing against like Mercedes. There are big, big companies who are coming to race, right? Mercedes, Ferrari, and similarly, uh, in the high frequency trading domain as well, you are racing against other big companies and other, you know, quant firms. Now, this video is going to be in continuation of my previous video. I mean, if you haven't watched it, you should watch it. You will find the link in the description section of the video and also in the recommendation section coming at the top right of your screen. The video is named by How Trading Strategies Make Money. Now, in that particular video, I described that uh, an HFT system design like the left box denoted the server of a trading firm, the right box denoted the stock exchange server. Now, any event happens on the stock exchange, let's, an, uh, let, let's say someone entered an order or maybe an existing order was modified, an existing order was cancelled or maybe an order got filled, the exchange would publish market data corresponding to that particular event. The market data would be received by the market data application running on the uh, uh, trading firm server. It will basically pass that market data, it will update its state, maybe the market data uh, process is basically maintaining an order book, it will update the state of the order book. Trading strategy will see that updated state, it will decide whether it should buy or sell a particular stock or maybe take no action. And let's say trading strategy decided to enter an order in the market. It will inform the order entry application and the order entry application will eventually enter the order in the on the exchange. Now the market data comes on, I mean the underlying transport layer protocol for that is UDP and the order entry is usually done on TCP. Okay, and uh, these uh, what protocol to use and all those things are actually decided by the exchange only. It's not decided by the market participant. Now, uh, as you may know, like uh, let's say for market data or for order entry, whichever protocol is used underlying transport layer protocol let's say it's udp or tcp it would eventually be encapsulated in it ip datagram which is a layer 3 protocol and by layer 3 i'm, I'm referring to the seven layers of the osi model and that ip datagram will be eventually encapsulated in a layer 2 uh, ethernet frame right and that ethernet frame is eventually going to travel on the layer 1 uh, which is basically the physical link layer on the wire now how fast the market data will reach to you when an exchange has sent it or how fast your the order which you have entered will reach the exchange depends on how far or close you are sitting from the exchange let's say if you are sitting very far from the exchange then of course and some other or your and your competitor maybe it is sitting close to the exchange then they are bound to receive the market data before you and they are also bound to you know uh, their order is also bound to reach the stock exchange before you and that might create a lot of difference because I mean in a, as I described the analogy between an F1 race and HFT so even in F1 race, F1 race like whoever reaches the finish line first is the winner similarly whose order will reach the stock exchange first is usually the winner because that particular trader or that particular firm will end up consuming the available liquidity in the market and Sometimes in HFTs, it's usually, uh, I mean, sometimes in HFTs, it can be just a winner takes all game. So speed is very critical. And for speed, the distance and the network topology is very important. Now, the thing is, uh, coming back to this original diagram where I was, say, where I had listed that this is a stock exchange, let's say three ex uh, trading firms are trading on that particular exchange, Citadel, HRT, Optiver. So on, whenever an event happened, the exchange will send the market data packet. Now exchange tries that i mean not just tries but ensures that it will send the market data to all the you know trading firms or all the market participants at the same time and it also tries that the market data should reach all the market participants at the same time let's say i mean if an exchange is not ensuring that the market data is being sent to everyone at the same time let's say exchange is giving some preference to some particular trading firm or some particular market participant then that exchange might suffer um, lawsuits against them and that has happened in the past as well i mean some exchanges have been involved in some of these fraudulent activities and i will describe that in at the end of this particular video now uh, Exchange has sent data to everyone at the same time. Now it depends where 
these firms are sitting so they are usually four choices where you can place your uh, you can say your trade servers or basically your servers like you can place them in the exchange co-location facility itself i'll describe what is a co-location facility later or you can pl place it in any a third party generic data center or you can place in your in-house data center or you can place your server in the public cloud like, like aws or microsoft azure or things like that right or maybe google cloud so the thing is that if you choose any of these three uh, choices and so it might be that you are bound to suffer some losses or you are inclined to suffer some suffer some losses and those losses can be like let's say uh, these third party generic data centers or the public cloud or maybe your own data center as well it might undergo uh, you can say some maintenance activity at the trading hour so at that if that maintenance activity is happening at the trading hours then you are not trading and all of your other competitors are trading so you are losing money at that time and if you use like the second and third choice fourth choice maybe who knows like how the wires are connected maybe from their data center to the exchange data center underground wires are laid down and during construction works or those things those wires might get cut and again you will suffer losses because you are not basically trading at that particular time you are out of the market and distance is also a factor because that particular data center might be very far from the exchange co-location or the server at which matching engine is running so it has been also like uh, denoted in this particular diagram which was uh, basically published in a financial market journal so this is a johannesburg stock exchange and they have denoted like if you place your exchange server at these different locations what is the latency you might suffer so like you can see here that 2.7 milliseconds is for santon then 3.3 millisecond is for johannesburg cbd 7 millisecond is from and similarly like it is increasing and if you place it at the exchange co-location itself like colo labeled here you will the latency on the wire would be less than one millisecond so that's why most of the trading firms they place their servers in the exchange co-location facility itself so in case you do not understand what an exchange co-location is so you can assume it like this like it is the data center where the stock exchange servers are itself placed okay i mean you can assume it like it is the stock exchange data center itself and co-location is like a very specialized you can say space because uh the exchange stock exchange matching engine itself will be running in the co-location and you would be sitting very close to it i mean what usually happens if you see the diagram of a an image of a data center like this is a data center and these data centers basically you can see here that these are basically they are different racks in this data center so you can imagine racks as uh you can say racks in a bookshelf if you have seen a bookshelf they are different racks so in these different rack, racks i mean in some particular rack exchange matching in your server would be sitting in some particular rack your server would be sitting in some other racks maybe your competitors server is sitting and so what happens that wherever is the exchange matching engine is sitting you would be directly connected to that particular matching engine using a wire i mean uh, usually the wire which is provided by these stock exchanges is a standard 1 meter wire for everyone this is provided for everyone because exchange wants to ensure uh, that the markets are fair to everyone if let's say exchange is providing me a 1 meter wire and it is providing my competitor let's say a 2 meter wire then of course my competitor is you know is at a disadvantage because uh, I mean as I told you that on the wire you are limited by the speed of light and if we assume that the speed of light is 300,000 meter per second 300 million meters per second so to cover one meter distance it will take 3.33 nanoseconds so whenever an exchange publishes a market data event or maybe let's say when I do an order entry into the exchange the data the time travel between me and the exchange server where the matching engine is running would be three nanoseconds but my competitor who has been given a two meter wire the time for him would be six nanoseconds so he is automatically at a disadvantage so to you know eradicate or remove those unfairnesses exchange provides everyone a standard one meter wire so this is a diagram here for it and the latency is also usually fixed on that particular wire i mean as i told you if it is a one meter wire you can assume that it is 3.33 nanoseconds because if you assume that the speed of light is 300 million meter per second but it is usually more than that and that is because light actually let's say if this is a wire a one meter wire so light won't travel in a rectilinear line on that particular wire i mean it won't have a rectilinear motion if it had a rectilinear motion then light is only traveling a distance of one meter so time taken would be distance upon you can say <laughs> speed and that is uh 3.33 nanoseconds 
but light actually travels in zigzag form like this so that's why it is co covering more than one meter distance so that's why the time taken usually is around 4.97 nanoseconds i mean sometime back i had seen an video by optiver on youtube and they said that the time taken by light to travel on that particular wire is usually 4.97 nanoseconds i mean to cover that particular distance so the latency of the wire is 4.97 nanoseconds so yeah coming back to our original thing so you, as i said that you would be sitting very close to the exchange servers where the matching engine itself is running so uh, if i show you this diagram here so let's assume that there is this big box which is actually uh, exchange data center itself okay so all these servers let's say if this was this big box or let's forget about this box let's assume that this particular box itself on which this diagram has been drawn this particular grid let's assume this is the data center of the exchange so exchange server would be also sitting in the same data center and every trading firms or every market participant who is involved in this ex who is you know interested in the exchange co-location facility would also be sitting in the same data center most probably they will also be equidistant from all these uh, i mean all the market participants will be equidistant from the exchange server so that you know uh, they are not at a disadvantage due to the distance usually uh, the exchange server is sitting on a different rack and you are sitting on a different rack but everyone is equidistant from the exchange server now uh, it depends like it is now upon you if you want to connect to the exchange server by using st i mean everyone would be given a standard one meter wire now you can take three five or hundred wires and now it's your choice you might connect like one wire to the exchange server then from that you can connect it to some network switch and from that network switch you can connect it to your server or maybe you can directly connect it to your server it depends on you basically if you want to increase the effective distance but it is usually advisable advised to keep that distance as small as possible so that you reach the exchange uh, so you are basically so that you are basically as close to the exchange as possible now if you are more interested in this so there is a video on youtube uh, by australian stock exchange which is asx where they have given a virtual tour of their australian liquidity center which is alc which is nothing but their data center where they have shown that how basically the co-locations looks like i mean what are the benefits provided by the co-location so like this is the co-location facility where their matching engine would be sitting and where you know even the exchange servers would be sitting and apart from you know providing you fast speed they also provide you other advantages i mean exchange would be providing you every time there is a person there who will be basically measuring temperatures of the devices to see if you know devices are not getting very hot or things like that so you they are also basically providing you safeguards and apart from that the only thing is that this co-location facility is not affordable for everyone and that is because uh, you are basically renting some space in the stock exchange data center you are using they will be allocating you some hardware the wires and everything so you have to pay cost to them right you have to pay some rent to them and that is usually very high so not every market participant can afford that i mean big firms are able to af afford that but not everyone can afford it and there is a lot of uh, information about exchange co-locations i mean there is this good paper as well demystifying exchange co-location which you can read about and yeah so regarding the co-location that was mostly it that uh, everyone tries to sit in the same data center where the stock exchange matching engine is running and this is how they avoid these distance challenges but it is not affordable for everyone because it is very costly you are using some space or you in the exchange co-location so you have to pay them money and only big firms are usually able to afford that now uh, like this is again a image of the data center only and as i told you like these are different different racks you can imagine racks as bookshelves and i i would highly recommend you to watch this australian liquidity center virtual tour because you will get more information around it now as i was saying that it is exchange's responsibility that you know uh, everyone like the market data is sent to everyone at the same time because if market data is received by anyone before their competitors they are at an advantage i mean their competitors competitors are competitors are at a disadvantage and this uh, i mean if this happens and let's say any exchange regulator detects it so exchanges might you know uh, face lawsuits and this has actually happened in the past 
I mean, if you you can read it about on uh, Wikipedia, which which basically happened with the National Stock Exchange, which is one of the biggest stock exchange of India. So what they did, I mean, this is a story and a co location scam, which you can read about. And like on the first one itself, you can see what was happening. Like the in the NSE co location scam, it was it relates to the market manipulation at the National Stock Exchange of India, which is the India's leading stock exchange. And allegedly, select players obtained market price information ahead of the rest of the market, enabling them to front run the rest of the market. Mm -hmm. So basically, what was happening that some of the market participants uh, they received market data before other people or other market participants and due to that they were actually you know make decisions faster their trading strategies were able to make decisions faster and enter orders faster in the market and due to that they were actually able to make more profit and it can be regarded as a market manipulation because you are you know putting other players at a disadvantage and that was eventually i mean a lot of investigation has gone on this sebai which is the securities and exchange board of india has actually been involved in this investigation a lot of high profile names have also you know are also put to question in this you can actually read about this on wikipedia and like this was a very very big scam because the uh, i think the whistleblower who actually brought this to picture uh, i mean nse you know tried to silence them by some lawsuits or by some lawsuits only and but eventually when uh, that lawsuits were disregarded by the courts and then when Sebai entered into the picture these things came to light I think this investigation is still undergoing but yeah some of the uh, big firms were also involved in this scam I'm not going to name them but you can read about them in this particular article uh, article and other articles as well so thank you guys for watching please do not forget to like subscribe and comment and I'll see you next time